very very much. Now, yesterday I heard so many wonderful new chidushim about David Melech. First of all, I made the first mistake to say that he was fighting with Goliath when he was 13. And then one of our friends said that it was wrong and he was right. But then he said that it happened when, it, when David Melech was 17 and it was wrong. So now, still I don't know when he was fighting with Goliath, but until the age of 28, he was in the desert. First of all, he was a shepherd in the desert. He had a pen in the desert and he was working over there without of all of his family, all alone, and on and on and on. I heard that uh, yesterday that Rabbi Yudazev Levovich, that he was from the seed of David Melech, he wrote that David Melech was such a hidden Nistar, Tzadik Nistar, he was so Nistar, so hidden, that he was even able to hide himself from Shmuel Navi. When Shmuel Navi came to crown the son of Ishai, so he couldn't recognize him. David Melech was hiding his Kedusha, he was such a Tzadik Nistar, that he was hiding himself even from Shmuel Navi. Mamash, it was a wonderful chidush for me. So, Baruch Hashem. Um, Rabbi David Chaim Stern said to Rav Shalom Arush that Mashiach is already in Jerusalem. Now he's in Jerusalem. And uh, it's a frightening thing because uh, we told you that we want all of Am Israel to do tshuva before Mashiach going to reveal himself. And he he's already here. And I spoke with him yesterday to tell you how much I was amazed to see that there is a righteous man, a tzaddik, that for him to talk to you about things that he know, like, you know, the chumash, halachot, and things that are clear for him, this, the, the, there is a table here, there is a book here, that, and for him also to talk on the spiritual world, on, on, on Mashiach, on what goes on, and who are the souls that are doing what, it's, it's in the same clarity for him. It's all open in front of him. All of the details, the spiritual and, and the hidden ones and the, and the revealed ones. And uh, yesterday there was, there was, a, the, 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 there was the Ishmaelim, they, made, they, were, they tried to make another um, um, a terror attack, a bombing with, with a lot of gas balloons. They came out from, from Betar over there in the area, something connected to Bet Shemesh. And, they had a horrible plan, something to do. In Betar and Surah Dasa, they wanted to do something, and Baruch Hashem, another miracle to the list, the endless list of, of miracles that we have, they've been stopped by, by the police, by the soldiers. Okay. And, uh, and someone uh, came to Rav Stern and told him, but Rav, you see that, that Hashem is very happy, he's illuminating his face to Am Israel. We can, we can see good things are happening, even though that there are a lot of judgments, but still, you see miracles. He said, the smiling face of Hashem are ready and, and going to be loyal to the ones that are going to keep on pulling themselves toward to the Kedusha. They will always going to enjoy the smiling face of Hashem. But the ones that are not, the ones that are going Chas Shalom to the other direction, he said on the, the Sarat HaMishpatim, the I say Sarat HaMishpatim, that took... They took how? Ten tribes. No, no, no. Sarat no. Mishpatim, no. Minister, Minister of Judgment. That she that she took two oh. men and, and, and made a wedding between them a few months months ago. Yes, yes. So he said people what? So he said people like that, people that are doing things like that, they're bringing judgments. He said if they're living their life like the rules. Of, of Sdom Amora, so the end of people that live their lives according to the rules of Sdom Amora are going to be like Sdom Amora. Fire is going to come down from heaven and going to eat that. You cannot. So we have that argument inside of Am Israel that the Erev Rav are trying to pull the souls of Am Israel to follow them after those horrible rules of, of Sdom Amora. And there are the righteous people that are fighting and the, the fight, the war is on us. The war is on every soul, every soul. This is why you see one person, you need to fight on him. You need to fight on him. And Rabbi David Chaim Stern, Rav Shalom said that. He said that even if only 500,000 Jews are going to say, I want to do tshuva and will not going to do nothing, 
משיח גונה רביל אימסוף, אולרדי גונה ביר גאולה. just to say, I want to do תשובה, to say, say it, I want to do תשובה. this is it, this is it, you have part in the גאולה. if you just say that, you have a, you are part of it, this is it. He said all of those, all of that wonderful, amazing thing about the Mishnayot, to think Mishnayot, just to read Mishnayot. His son yesterday, Tshuva Shlema. Yes, Tshuva Shlema. We know what we're saying, Tshuva Shlema, not Tshuva Shlema. We want, we want, I want. He said, Hashem, I want you, I want you, Hashem. This is it. From now on, I want to be like you want me to be. This is it. When you say those words, you cancel in yourself to Hashem. This is it. This is what that Hashem needs from us. The son of, of, of Rav Stern told me yesterday, Rabbi Meir Stern, that he is the elder son of, of Rav Stern. Rav Aaron, Aaron Stern told me yesterday that Rabbi Meir Stern received everything from his father, and he, Rabbi Aaron, received everything from his mother, and the rest they're enjoying the leftovers. <laughs> all, of, all of the rest. <laughs> the rest, Rav Nachum, for example, just that you can understand what there is in those leftovers, he sits every day Berlin Neder for three hours like that and he's thinking all of Shash, Shas Mishnayot in three hours every day like that, three hours <sighs> finishing the Mishnayot three hours so those are the ones that received from the leftovers it's not Rav Aaron Meir so we're talking about that Rav Meir yesterday I, I was there with a friend so that Rav Meir is saying to, to the friend that I was with he told him we are all so bad at Shuvah. My friend, Mama, she couldn't stop himself. Mama, she was lying on the floor. He told him, you're a bad Shuvah. <laughs> you know where we're coming from. He said, I need to check if my father is my father. What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know if I need to respect my father or not. What, what are you talking about? <laughs> you are a bad Shuvah, the son of Rabbi David Chaim Stern. <laughs> Baruch Hashem. So, he said on that, Rabbi Meir, the son of Rabbi David Chaim Stern, said that his father was holding the Mishnayot every day for eight hours, learning Mishnayot. Eight, six, seven hours, every day. He said, you think that he was, that he was righteous like that from the beginning? He said that he said to him, that Rabbi David Chaim Stern said, that he had the Yetzirah that was strong and hard like the Yetzirah of David HaMelech. It's written on Avraham Avinu that he had a soft Yetzirah. That the Yetzirah wasn't bothering Avraham Avinu so bad, so, so much. But David HaMelech, it's written on him that he was Ishdamim, he was man of blood, Mamash, he was... The Yetzirah was crazy, he was wild inside of them, and he, he fought with it, Mamash. So he said that his father, Rabbi David Chaim Stern, told him that he had the Yetzirah like David HaMelech. That was very hard, that was very hot. He said that he saw him as a child, Every time that he even has shalom defect his eyes, but gam bayanaim once he said we saw him all night sitting six, seven, and eight hours crying to do tshuva on that. That he saw one bad eyesight, eyesight. He said people thought that that man is crazy, all day long going with his mishnayot. He said the Zohar Kadosh is saying that what the David the way the David Melech Zohar Kadosh is saying that what the David Melech achieved to kill his Yetzirah it's by Shas Mishnayot by learning Torah Shabbat Peh that it's the Mishnah. The Zohar Kadosh is saying that David Melech conquered his Yetzirah by the Mishnah. This is what that woke up of David Chaim Stern to walk with that Inyan of, of Mishnayot, and he said, but it wasn't enough for him. All of his life he he was going with it and he realized a lot of things, but it wasn't enough. And he was working hard on the Mishnayot, working hard, 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 very hard on the Mishnayot until that, that he received what that he received. That Eliyahu and Avi came to him and told him that, that and, and he, it hadn't been said like that. He said that, Eliyahu, that the Tishbits, Eliyahu and Avi, came to him and told him that Tikkun of, of Lel Shishi and Mishnayot in the thoughts and for sure, probably he heard it somewhere. And in a different time he said that Eliyahu Navi heard it from Hashem. <coughs> that Hashem Itbarach himself told it to Eliyahu Navi. That he could. If a person is taking those two advice, now we're going to say those two advice again, and take it seriously and doing it. You are cleaning yourself. And Rav Shalom told me, I believe in that he could also. And you should do it.
And yesterday in the Talmud Torah, there was the, 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 the kids in the school in the Talmud Torah, they're memorizing a lot of Mishnayot by heart and they're being testing on them. Mama, a lot, a lot, thousands of Mishnayot. And Rav Shalom, he was crying yesterday. And he said, you don't know, and Rav Bakshi Doron was there yesterday. Mama, it was amazing. He said, you don't know what we're doing with our Mishnayot. And he said, Rabbi Umori, Rav David Chaim Shter, and he achieved all of what that he achieved only by that, by learning Mishnayot. Rabbi Yosef Karo, he had an angel that answered all of his questions, always told him what to do, only because of the Mishnayot. Only because of the Mishnayot. To sit and to learn and to dedicate one hour, two hours, three hours from your Sidra Limud. It's so important. And you're going to feel weird with it in the beginning. You need to think Mishnayot, not to learn Mishnayot with your mouth, to think. You're going to feel like you're canceling Torah. You, what am I doing? I'm reading. Yes, you're reading. You're purifying your thoughts. The beginning of all sins are in the brain. The contamination, the tumor, the apicosit is in the brain also. And you need to break it. And now you're going to break it with effort of Torah. With effort, amal vigyata Torah, effort of Torah, effort of tefillah. So you have to sacrifice something. So the neshama, the mishnah, it's the letters of the neshama. You purify your neshama, you illuminate your neshama by thinking mishnayot. Because immediately, if you said them, if you read, you said, if you just said those <coughs> words, you downgraded the mishnayot from the thoughts. You're not thinking them anymore. This is it. Maybe also, but it's very easy to read and not to think. But when you think, you have to think. You cannot talk without thinking. You cannot think without thinking. But you cannot. But you can talk without thinking. Mm -hmm. So if you talk without thinking, like we know, Baruch Hashem and our wives, unfortunately, unfortunately, know that also that we can talk without thinking. So it's not the highest way. The highest way of them all is to think Mishnayot. And the second thing that he said is to stay awake at Thursday night. It calls Lel Shishi, the eve of Friday. To stay awake, to pray my, as, as fast as you can. And then from Tzeta Kochavim, you are in Tani Dibur. You're not allowed to talk. Nothing except of Divrei Torah and Itbodedut and prayer. And you divide the night for three or four parts. From Rav Stern I heard three parts. Harav Shalom said that he asked Harav Stern and Harav Stern told him that it's okay to divide it to four. The fourth part is to do one hour in Bodedut, if you're able. If you're able. First part is to say the Tehillim. First of all, you need to finish the Tehillim. I know it's very hard. It's the hardest and, 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 and not only because of the language. It's hard. Even to a regular person, it takes three, four hours. It's, it's hard. So it's something that you have to go to rest in the noontime, minimum for one hour, two hours, and then to prepare yourself and to divide the night for three parts or four parts with a shayit bodedut if you're able to take that also. <coughs> to learn one part of the night, mishnayot in your thoughts, one part of the night to learn gemara according to your level. Even if it's to hear Gemara in the class in the phone, over the phone. Even if it's to learn from Schuttenstein or from Metivta, whatever. To learn Gemara, to learn Mishnah, and to finish the Tehillim. Doing the confession of, of, Yom, of Yom Kippur, the long confession, the Vidui, dipping Rifna Lota Shachar before of dawn, and then praying Shachit in the Netzach Hama. And he said that this is erasing Karet. It's erasing Karet. And if a person's got Karet, what's Karet? It's written on Yaakov to explain to you what it means Karet. Karet generally what it means karet a man got a rope yeah that this the soul connected with the rope to her so to the source this is written on Yaakov Yaakov Hevel Nachalato Yaakov is connected to his to what that he inherit what that he's got with a rope every rope got fibers a lot of fibers so the verse is saying to us Chizuk, don't worry even if you sin you have a lot of other fibers in that rope. You have a lot of chance until a man really cuts himself totally from, from his source, from the roots. It takes a long, long time to do something like that. Everyone can feel that. Every avera of karet is cutting one string, another string, another string, another string, another string. You have a lot, but still. And what do you feel when those karetim are happening? Not connected. Not connected to the Gdusha. 
not connected to the tefillah, not connected to Am Yisrael, doesn't feel their sorrow, don't care about the Torah, doesn't care about the ones that suffering, the ones that learns Torah, the ones that are fighting. You can eat ice cream easily when Am Yisrael are dying and crying and suffering because you're disconnected. Because you have karetim. Because you cut yourself from your root. Am Yisrael, Kadosh Baruch Hu, the Torah, is one thing. So now you divided yourself. And Chas Shalom can keep on dividing yourself. So you can fix it. How you fix it? It takes a lot. It takes a lot. But you can fix it. If really you're going to realize that really you have the way to fix it, you're going to do that. If you're going to understand really what you're going to achieve by connecting yourself back to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, really you're going to feel the taste of the Torah. Really, you're going to understand the importance of Am Israel. You're going to have Avat Israel. You're going to love every Jew. You're going to have a heart. You're going to go. You're going to do tshuva. You're going to go back to Am Israel. You're going to come to what did you achieve after you're going to complete your tshuva. You will not going to be divided. You will not going to have that horrible punish of karet. That rope going to be able to hold you and to supply all of the wisdom that it can supply. So that Thursday night, is fixing karet. Every Thursday night like that is fixing karet. So there are people that they made a lot of karetim in their lives. A lot, a lot of karetim. And they have a lot, a lot to fix. But if you want to fix, you will not going to be afraid. Because it's going to take you until the age of 40, of 50, of 60, of 70. Let's say that you're going to finish it when you're going to be 90. Isn't it worth it? After that you know where you came from and that you didn't have no chance to live eternal life in the world to come from the place that we came. And now you have a chance to live amazing life, to be called righteous that fixed everything. I told you that Rav Shalom himself, he said on himself that he was a Gilgul of... Um, um, uh, Yes, Achav, Achav, Machti Arabim. That was uh, uh, the Gilgul <coughs> lifetime of Achav. That was Machti Arabim. And, I came, and he said, this is why HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave me that merit to do so much Zikui Arabim to fix what that I spoiled, what that I ruined. I came to him once and I told him, Arav, let's say that what that you say is truth. Let's say, oh, all right. <laughs> let's say that I'm accepting it. That... It means that he doesn't have nothing in his hands, that he's all empty-handed, that everything that he's doing just to pay for the debts. You know, he can gain one million dollars a month and he doesn't have a penny to eat. He, it's all going to the bank. So what? Uh, he's poor. So I told him, all right, let's say I'm accepting what did you say. If you're going to come after 120 to the world to come and they're going to tell you, Shkoyach, you paid it all, you fixed it all, but you won't have nothing. You're going to come to zero after 120 years of Zikuya Rabim. If you're going to come with zero, how are you going to feel? I dare to ask him. He told me, if I'm going to know really that I fixed what that I ruined, I will be very happy. It's point of truth, of honesty. A man, before that he paid his debts, he already wants to be poor. Oh, oh, sorry, wants to be rich. It's a liar. There are people that wait that you're going to pay your debts to them and you're making money. It cannot be. It's not straight. It's not the way of tshuva. Way of tshuva is to fix whatever you can do to fix. And it's true that Rabbeinu told him you, ask, you cannot do tshuva, just I'm doing tshuva. The fact that Rabbeinu is bringing to us that light that we can do things for ourselves to fix ourselves and to go and to serve Hashem and to work on our attributes on our midot and to complete the tshuva process this is how the Rabbeinu is helping us to do tshuva those are things that are giving us the merit to purify uh, the sins that we contaminated ourselves begufo with our bodies you sinned now you don't want to fix it cannot be you have to take that responsibility on yourself to say, I know that I ruined, I know that I spent a lot of nights awake, sinning and doing bad things. For sure, for sure that I can spend a few nights to sacrifice for Hashem Barach and to try to do the best that I can. And Rabbi David Chaim Stern said 
that the Mishnayot in the thoughts are fixing Pgama Brit, Otsa'at Zera Lebatala. And you don't have a solution on that. And the Breslever, I checked it, the Breslever Hasidim that are confused, Breslever Hasidim that are saying that the Tikkun Aklali is Tikkun on Pgama Brit, it's not true. Tikkun Aklali, it's a Tikkun on Mikre Laila. If accidentally at night the person had Mikre Laila, Rabbeinu said he found a Tikkun for that. And it's amazing Tikkun, and it's special Tikkun, and it's also a Tikkun that helps all of the Avonot, but it's not specially for Zera Lebatala. And Rav Stern said that the, for Zera Lebatala, the, the Mishnayot in the thoughts is purifying. And I asked the Rav Shalom on that, if you have the, your issues, I understand them. I came to Rav and I asked him. I told him, do you want me to keep on doing that? Is it okay that I'm learning in that shita? Do you, are you happy with me that I'm doing that? And he told me very much. And he strengthened me and he gave me a lot of chizukim on that and told me that he believes in that shita. He said, even though Rabbeinu said, it bodedut ima'ala gdola ve'elyona min hakol. It bodedut is above everything. It bodedut is above the mishnayot. It bodedut is, but if you know that meat is good for you, it's not a reason not to eat apples or, or potatoes or bread. If you know that vegetables are good for you, it's not a reason not to drink orange juice also. So, mizeh mizeh al tanach yadcha. The fact now we're talking about Mishnayot, it doesn't exempt you from the Itbodedut. If you hear one lesson and you erase the other one, we can give you a bigger uh, memory card, Bezrat Hashem. <laughs> You're going to contain more classes, Bezrat Hashem. Boys, I thank you very much. Now we're going to have a Siyum Masechet. Brachot Bezrat Hashem by Avram Binyamin Bezrat Hashem. Thank you very much. Chazak Uvaruch.